Spider-Man Homecoming is directed by John Watts and stars Tom Holland. It is the sixth live-action Spider-Man film, but it's the first one set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, Spider-Man did appear in Captain America Civil War, which I liked a lot. So going into this movie, I was very excited because not only am I a big fan of the character, but I wanted to see how Marvel Studios was going to handle the character now that he was in their cinematic universe and they were giving him his own movie. Tom Holland is fantastic as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. He really has everything you want from the character, whether he's playing the shy, dorky Peter Parker or the funny, happy Spider-Man or this kid that's being kind of, you know, who has to choose between the life of a teenager or the life of a superhero. Everything you want from the character, he does it so well. I think if you look at everything he brings to the table, you can say that he is the best version of the character that we've gotten so far. Now, I'll always have a soft spot for Tobey Maguire. I really think that Tobey Maguire and Sam Raimi did some very interesting things with their version of the character, at least in the first two Sam Raimi films. But I can still understand why people would say that they think that Tom Holland is the definitive version of Spider-Man on screen because he really is just really, really good in the role. Now, something that sets his version of Peter Parker apart from the other ones that we've seen is that he's a kid. He is really just a teenager. This movie treats him as a teenager. It's very much a coming-of-age storyline, and we really get to see him explore life as a kid. We see him go to school. We see him, you know, talk with his friends. And to me, those are some of the best parts of, of the film. Yes, I loved this parts with Spider-Man, but what makes Homecoming so good is that it really is a coming-of-age storyline. It really is about this kid trying to find his way in life. And I think that was such a smart choice by Marvel by making Peter as young as they did. It really helps, you know, set him apart from the other Avengers who, you know, they're all adults. So having him be a kid, I thought, was a very refreshing choice. And it makes him a very endearing character. Michael Keaton is fantastic in this film as Adrian Toomes, a.k.a. the Vulture. I was blown away by his performance. They do such a good job of getting you to understand why he's doing what he's doing. Michael Keaton brings so much gravitas to the role. I just found him to be an incredibly compelling villain. He's honestly, he's the best villain the MCU has had in a very long time. Uh, also, he's the best Spider-Man villain that Spider-Man has had in a very long time. Probably not since Alfred Molina as Doc Ock have we gotten a compelling villain in a Spider-Man film like this. Michael Keaton was just great. And him and Spider-Man, they have a great sort of cat and mouse thing going on throughout the movie. It was just, I found it very entertaining and very well done. Also, this movie is absolutely hilarious. This is, this is a comedy. I would say you could say this is a action comedy film because from beginning to end, it is a very funny movie with a lot of great jokes. Uh, particularly, I really liked the character Ned. He's uh, Peter Parker's best friend in the film. And the actor that plays him is great. He's so good. Yeah, really good comedic timing on his part. I think he's going to be an actor to, to kind of look out for because I thought he was just great in this film. Also, this movie is just very sort of pleasant. It's a very sort of wholesome, enjoyable, fun movie. I think you could really say that this is a fun film. I had a great time while watching it. It feels like we've finally gotten a really, really good Spider-Man movie. The last one, I think, was Spider-Man 2, which was 13 years ago, which is crazy that it's taken that long for us to finally get a good Spider-Man movie again, but we finally have gotten one. I really, really like this film, but now it is time to talk about things I didn't like. One of the things I loved about the Sam Raimi films is that they were such emotionally driven, sincere films. Those were films that wore their heart on their sleeve, you know? I love that. I love when movies can be sincere. That's why I loved Wonder Woman. That's why I loved Baby Driver. I love when movies are kind of open-hearted and, and emotional. And that's what those Raimi films were. They were very emotional films. Spider-Man Homecoming is a very cutesy film. It's a very funny film, and all that works. But it's not as emotionally driven as I'd like to see from the character of Spider-Man, because I think he can be an emotionally compelling character. Now, there is one scene in this film that I thought really, really reached the heights of what the Sam Raimi films did. And I was like, this is great. During that scene, I was like, this is the emotion I want. But outside of that, the movie never gets, it never reaches the emotional height I wanted it to and that I think the character of Spider-Man deserves. Now, I love the humor and I thought it worked really well, but it feels like in this film and in a lot of other Marvel films, anytime there's sort of, we're ramping up towards something emotional, it, it, gets, it tends to get cut off by a joke or by something wit witty or something of that nature. And it works and I think it's fine, but I like the way the Sam Raimi films were just very sincere and emotionally driven and 
you know, Patty Jenkins, the director of Wonder Woman, had a great quote where she was like, people often confuse cheesiness for sincere, sincerity or sincerity for cheesiness. The, the Sam Raimi films, I don't think, are cheesy, at least not the first two. I wouldn't say they're cheesy. Batman and Robin is a cheesy movie. Those films are just very sincere, uh, and I was kind of missing that. Also, in the previous films, even the bad ones, the Amazing Spider-Man films, we got some amazing sequences of Spider-Man swinging through the city. Ever since I was a kid and I saw the first Spider-Man film, I loved watching Spider-Man just swing through the city. It's so visceral and so exciting. We don't get that in this movie. Uh, this is literally a more grounded film with Spider-Man more on the ground. Even they have actually some pretty funny jokes about him on the ground uh, where he has no buildings to swing to. But I miss seeing Spider-Man swing through the city. It's so much fun seeing that. I really hope the next one we see a cool scene of Spider-Man just swinging through New York City because that's so much fun. It's just... It's just fun. I just love. I could watch hours of Spider-Man just swinging throughout skyscrapers and things like that. But I respect the fact that this movie tried to do things differently. I think John Watts made some interesting choices, and despite my issues with some things with the tone and with the you know how they handled certain things, uh, I still really really enjoyed this film and I would recommend it. I give Spider-Man: Homecoming an eight out of ten. What did you think of Spider-Man: Homecoming? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You guys are awesome.